Oh, Cheng. Oh, Cheng. Um, you ask whether he will stay on board after acquisition for half a year. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no, not in the first meeting. See, <laughs> Cheng wants to go for the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a, by the way, and that's, that, that's Chinese too. I mean, Chinese aren't bashful. They give you all that bullshit, but that, they're not so bashful. They're not. Are they, Ting? Not sure. You know, I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. Uh, what about uh, taking a small presentation with us about uh, the... Oh, you mean a, you mean a PowerPoint and all that? Kind? Yeah, I mean, uh, a Bavarian Bob has got a deal on his laptop that's magic. Uh, because we're in the, uh, where he, he, so, he shows where from we get the land from the farmer and we put on 50 acres of solar panels step by step through the spring, the winter, and it's fast, you know, one of those time things. It takes about 90, 120 seconds. Every single person he's ever showed that to bought or every single banker that we ever showed it to financed. It's magic. It's magic. Uh, of course, it took it took us a year and it took eighteen months to make the fucking thing because it takes eighteen months to get the thing and the, you know. But I mean, now, now that we have it, so when you're in construction from the ground to the building, you show that fast and it costs. They're not cheap, uh, and so most of you know a lot of startups won't do that. Uh, but he's a Nazi, and I mean, they co they cross all the T's and dot all the fucking I's. And so do you think it would be helpful in the presentation if we had a time lapse that showed everything from the first time we scratched our ass to the fucking thing, you know? I says, yes, I, I, actually, I do think it would be helpful. And so it took us uh, almost two years to put together, but now it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a great sales tool. So for those that are in construction and those kind of businesses, or you're going to build nursing, I'm not suggesting anybody build nursing homes. From the scratch, when you may shake hands with the fucking guy that owns the land, to the time you bring the first old hag in <laughs> in a wheelchair, slobbering down her cheek. Transported by me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to show the first time you wiped their ass in the bedpan thing. You don't, you don't need that part. Okay? Uh, yeah, but those are very, very useful. Um, but um, any other questions of these guys? Okay, any questions, Ting or uh, Valerie? Yeah, I guess in terms of the, the process, right, the timing, so you start, you, know, you set up your board, got your team, you were working out your strategy before, before sort of... Yeah, 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 you. you'll be working it out more than I would, but anyway, I understand that, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, from your experience, like, what is typically the, you know, the time frame? Well, I mean, you, uh, I mean, uh, you uh, uh, okay, you get your chairman, your board, and everything together, like some of these guys did, in 45 to 75 days... Okay, uh, uh, you, you talk to some banks, so let's say 100 days, and you're talking to, and you're already uh, lining up people, uh, acquisition candidates, uh, and you're already lining up uh, potential loosely, you, they're telling the financial institution, you know, we're going to nursing homes, uh, the, there's 500 nursing homes within 100 miles of here, or whatever that is, okay, uh, the, uh, the, uh, that are independently owned, uh, most nursing homes, <coughs> don't have, I happen to know this for a fact, don't have a succession plan. In fact, not, none virtually have a succession plan. Okay? Uh, a succession plan is when I, uh, when I uh, die, uh, you're going to take over my, the nursing home the family owns. Kids don't want a fucking bedpans. They don't want that fucking thing. I know that from my own experience. Uh, not because of me in a nursing home, but the ones that we've acquired over the years. There is no succession plan. Period. And so, and so the although he doesn't look 59 years old to you, but uh, this 59-year-old guy with his wife who's coughing up blood from emphysema, uh, you know, they went out, and their kids aren't interested. So, um, the, um, and there's tons of them, and tons of them, and tons of them. And again, health care, um, and having been involved in that, uh, that nursing home thing from a long time ago, it's come full cycle again. They've broken up the ones that we put together, and we're back to fucking, not square one, but now we've got more of them, and I don't know how many thousands of them there are in the UK, but there's a whole load of them. There's a whole load of them, and there's no succession plan. There's no succession plan, or few and far between. It's not likely that uh, Joel's mother is going to turn over the three nursing homes he has, she has to her Etonian son. 
I just don't see you cleaning somebody's arse with a bedpan, you know? Uh, I, mean, I could be wrong, uh, but I doubt it. Now, I know a lot of Chinese grandmothers have cleaned, or daughters have cleaned the mom's butt with a bedpan because they take care of their parents, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't see you doing that. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong, you know. And, uh, the, um, so, okay, any other questions for these three? Okay. And for those of you that are watching me from nursing homes, uh, it's time for your medicine. <laughs> it's time for your medicine, and after your medicine, the bedpans. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have uh, uh, some of my colleagues run around to help you out. Um, the, uh, we just went through a, a nice role play where we had a seller of a nursing home, homes uh, uh, talking to a potential buyer, uh, the, uh, the CEO of a, the... Um, uh, investment company that she's put together her, uh, her dream team. She was there with her um, finance director, her CFO. And, they, uh, and Chinese CFOs are tough. Tough as fucking nails. They ask hard qu questions and you missed it. Uh, she was already asking hard questions and we got, didn't get to that stage, which is very uh, much in character, actually, from my experience. And um, so we, uh, we do a lot of role playing here because we want to make it uh, the least amount of uh, uh, discomfort when you go out there and do it on your own. We've actually shown a, um, a video of uh, uh, one of our uh, more successful role plays from the last seminar. And, uh, the, uh, but the more you practice, the better you get. The more you practice, the better you get. And then, uh, of course, there's, there's no practice like live practice, real, where you're uh, talking to the potential seller. Uh, the motivated seller. And again, guys, all this is on free on my site. All this information is free on various uh, podcasts, uh, my seminars and, uh, and, and, and programs from the past. And, um, and it's on YouTube. There's ad nauseum. All you have to do is take the time to go through it all. Now, any questions on the sales process that they went through that you'd like to clarify? Yes, Valerie. Yeah. So if the um, potential seller that you're approaching uh, comes up right away with a ridiculous... Uh, you mean like he did, eight to ten times EBITDA, yeah. <laughs> um, how do you recommend um, approaching that? Is it worth... Okay, no, no. The, when you said, like I said, uh, you know, we can't really talk price without seeing the numbers, but I can, you know, I, I, uh, you know we can discuss that eight to ten is a, a bit high. You can be positive. I just say, are you fucking crazy? I, but you, can, you can't get away with that. Uh, I, I don't recommend that you get away with that, but uh, he knows when I say it's a bit high, he says, you know, uh, it's, it's very high. I mean, that's not what the market is. Um, and, uh, but everybody thinks that you sell, ask an astronomical price, and you get, you know, they come in with a, uh, an insulting low price, and they think, you know, that you're going to come in in the middle. To professional guys like me, the worst thing you can do is give a astronomical price, uh, because I might, you know, if he had said 15 times EBITDA, I would have said thank you very much for the time, and I had to leave, you know, because I, you know, because when I say three times, the, the, you know, you can only make up so much room, and it's never in the middle, and that's why there's never a win-win deal. There just never is. Anybody that thinks that has, has never done any deals. There aren't any win-win. And if you think win-win, then one side's stupid. Which happens all the time. Happens all the time. But I mean, the, um, and I'm not to say that I haven't overpaid for shit before, which I have, and I've had a couple of strategic reasons uh, in the past to overpay. Uh, like I wanted to buy a whole team, you know, in that industry, and so I overpaid. Uh, but I was buying them, and then I locked them into contracts you know, I wasn't so interested in the CEO or CFO, but I wanted all the, as Valerie would say, the operational people, I wanted to make sure that they were locked in. And immediately when I locked them in for, uh, uh, you know, one, three, four, five years, I gave them options. So I, they just didn't feel locked in. They, lo they were locked in for a reason, and a reason that they would get um, equity as the company uh, uh, performed. And as you are successful in your acquisition 
model. I mean, you know, uh, rumor uh, gets out fast, especially now with blogs and all the stuff. I mean, also ugliness gets out fast. So, I mean, you fuck somebody over, it's going to be in the street. And some of these industries uh, are very small. And, you know, everybody knows everybody. Uh, and, um, but whether the industry is small or large, you don't want to fuck over anybody. There's plenty of acquisition candidates out there, and there's plenty of meat on the bone that you don't have to take the last little bit of it off and leave something for the next guy or gal or team or whoever the hell it is. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, tomorrow we're starting on uh, step five, your quantum leap, war action plan, growth, working capital, finance, which is an, uh, internal finance and acquisitions, which is external. We're going to talk about internal growth, um, the, um, uh, which is uh, you know, growth just naturally that the company provides through their own growth of top line and bottom line. And then we're going to talk about uh, external growth, which is uh, what more, more or less made me famous or infamous or however you want to say it, uh, acquiring companies because it's, it's, no matter what you think, no matter what you've done or what you've heard, it's easier to buy revenue than it is to generate it. Full stop, flat, I don't give a fuck what industry you're in. And then certain models, for example, uh, dental practices, accounting practices, and a few other practices sell not by their EBITDA or sell by their uh, uh, some after-tax figure. They sell by gross revenue. Dental practices and accounting practices sell 0.75 to 1.25 times yearly revenue. So if you've got a million dollars or a million euros or a million pound accounting practice, you're going to sell it between 750 thousandths to 1.25 millionths and that'll depend on if you, you have, are they month-to-month uh, -month clients? Uh, you got some early contract, con you know, if you got uh, year contracts, and most of the people don't, these small accounting practices don't have that. Sometimes they do. Okay, so the small practices uh, are, are, are sold as uh, all things being equal, and of course, nothing's equal, but uh, on a, a, a multiple of um, your yearly uh, revenue. And um, the... Um, now, if you have yearly revenue of a million euros or pounds and it's all 100% contractual with BT, that's a whole different ballgame. But BT doesn't give contracts with schlup and schlup uh, uh, chartered accountants. Uh, BT doesn't give long-term contracts with PricewaterhouseCoopers. So, but I mean, occasionally you do find somebody that's got long-term contracts. Even month-to-month -month contracts are better and you'll be at the 1.25. But if it just, as they walk in the door, you know, and Lester, I mean, uh, to your uh, little, uh, you know, uh, doing business as uh, uh, practice, then it's going to be closer to the 0.75. Because all your clients, you know, I buy his practice and he leaves and he goes across the street and sets up the shingle, they just all walk across the street. And that's why, but the, in general terms, the, the more long-term, short-term, intermediate, and long-term contracts you have, long-term meaning a year or more, the higher the value of your business. And then we're going to talk about the EBITDA, you know, what's, you know, how many times the EBITDA. But in essence, what you want to do is you want to buy, you want to buy businesses at three to six times EBITDA, and you want to float the fuckers at eight to 12 times EBITDA. And even a Etonian guy like Joel can figure out there is an arbitrage. And you can explain to these guys over cocktails what that means. <laughs> there is a fucking arbitrage spread of uh, six to 10 to 12. And uh, that's what makes the world go around in my judgment. Okay, YouTubers, thank you very much.